Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So finally, I got all my exotics and I'm going to walk you through how I got some of the exotics and some of the most difficult ones for me to get and some of the easier ones and some that I've even gotten multiple times. This video is directed to people who are looking to get their exotics and my goal is to try to see if we can help you do that. Now, before I go into the video, a little bit of personal promotion here. Now, I am trying to get my second YouTube channel to reach application for monetization and I need a thousand subscribers to do that. Currently, you guys have been instrumental in getting the subscribers up to 849 subscribers. So we are literally 151 subs away from making this a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, please come to this channel, hit the subscribe button. Um, it's called Video Game Fight School. I'll leave a link in the description. It will be super helpful for, you know, for me. Even though the content may not necessarily cater to you, you might find some of it interesting. And if you don't find it interesting, just support, you know, a brother and, you know, get me to that point and I will be extremely, extremely grateful. All right, shamelessness out of the way. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the exotics and then let's look at, you know, some discussions around them and some of the difficulty and some of the challenges. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because of something that I've kind of perceived, but I wanted to give it a shot for myself. Now, currently there are exotic weapons and exotic, you know, gear that you have to go and do all kinds of different things to get. Now, if you've not gotten all your exotics, I recommend you to get the ones that you're capable of actually getting by yourself. Like if you want to maybe get parts uh, in order for you to be able to farm these specific exotics, they're exotics that require parts that are based on sometimes RNG, like your chatterbox. Um, in some cases, you need parts from just doing specific missions like your nemesis and you're able to go ahead and get that. So go get the ones that are within your reach, if you understand what I mean. Now, including the Liberty as well, you also have to get some parts and also all kinds of fun stuff to be able to craft them. Um, there are videos on how to get them on YouTube. I know many people are eyeing the Eagle Bear and all that stuff, but ladies and gentlemen, you got to start from somewhere that is easy. So first of all, you want to start with the easy stuff and then you move on to the hard stuff in terms of uh, gear, your Dodge City holster, which I don't know if many of you already have this, especially you new players, you have a Dodge City gunslinger holster that you can actually use, uh, you know, to do some really cool stuff. If you want to get it, there are missions that you have to do in a specific order to be able to get them. If you want a video uh, or if you want a guide, nothing but skills has done a video. There are a lot of other YouTubers as well in this community who have done videos about this. Now, the rest of them is other than, you know, the ones that you have to get parts for, the rest of them are based on RNG. Now, how do you approach getting these if your RNG right now is not strong? Because it's not your fault necessarily that you don't get these weapons or these exotic items because you are kind of, you know, hooked to a system of a random number generator that's not beneficial in most cases. And I will say this, but now that the game has advanced up to this point, what you have as a benefit is the fact that many players have already attained almost all of these items. And I think that is where your opportunity is as somebody who is seeking these exotic weapons. Now, I know you want the Eagle Bearer and all that stuff, but ask yourself, are there any of these weapons that you're missing before you go bother yourself with the Eagle Bearer? Because to be very honest, the Eagle Bearer is a long shot. You need to get these other weapons before you get the Eagle Bearer. Now, some people have gotten the Eagle Bearer and they're still missing any of these. And so in that sense, what you want to do is you want to get on your map and you want to just farm where you can, you, you know that there's going to be a higher drop rate for this and you want to farm with people. Because right now, the reason I say you want to farm with people is because more, more than likely, a lot of these people that you're going to be running missions with are more of the hardcore people that are just playing for fun and they'll be happy to give you these items if you just ask. Very crazy example that I have for you. Two days ago, I hopped in and I went straight to play, you know, the missions here. I think it was a, an invaded mission. And I was playing the invaded mission here. I think this mission was uh, was something. And I got the I got the gloves. Well, what was that? There was a mission giving out gloves somewhere. One of the invaded missions. And I got the BTSU gloves. They were my second pair. Well, I logged out, logged in with another character, played the exact same mission, I think. And I got a, the same pair of gloves. And I asked, does anybody want something? And somebody said they want a BTSU gloves. I dropped it for them. Today, I logged in. 
And then I came out here. I was farming here with all my control points. I did my control points. I got nothing. And so I came to Lincoln Memorial. It's not an invaded. It's not a daily. So many people will most likely not be playing these missions because they don't give you that, you know, the requirements that you need to get your invasions done. Well, I came up to the mission. I match made. And as we were playing, somebody got the Sawyer knee pads. Now, for those of you who know, that was the only item that was missing from my collection because the first one I got, I gave to somebody. Well, as I was typing, hey, bro, do you need this? He just dropped it. Didn't even ask who wanted it. Didn't even say anything. There was no conversation. Now, I don't think he was trying to drop it for even the person in the other group because we all match made and joined differently. But here you are. I have my Sawyer's knee pad that completed my collection all in in just no time. I literally played two control points and that mission, and there it was. And so this is your opportunity to be able to get those folk who already have some of these items to be willing to drop them for you. There is no shame in asking. I know it's going to sound like you're begging, yada, 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 but my goodness, you have been grinding for hours, and if somebody is going to be willing to hand them to you, then there is no shame in asking them. That's I got my Eagle Bear. Now to the Eagle Bearer, if you want to get the Eagle Bearer, you're going to have to go through more hoops. And to be very honest, if you really want to get that weapon, it is sadly a very difficult weapon to get for many people. In my case, it was it was kind of challenging. Uh, I played about, now, if I say the number, many of you might not be happy because people played more raids than I did. I played about 17 raids, and I think somewhere around raid number 14 or 15, I got it. Now, that is with having a Discord server, um, you know, and people that were just happy to take me through the raids. In fact, there were times where I could have gotten it, but I didn't run with my, you know, my buds at the right time. And so they got extra Eagle Bears that I wasn't there to get. And the way this game works, you have to be within the party in order for you to be able to get something. I'm going to make a video challenging this drop system and comparing it to the Borderlands system where you can just mail something to somebody if they're not there. It will really enhance the community interaction like 300%. Not just for, you know, me getting stuff or for somebody to be able to get stuff easily, but just for the sake of the community, this, um, you know, uh, functionality needs to be in the game. And so you're going to have to go into groups. You're going to have to go into Discord. You're going to have to learn how to use the, you know, the community aspects and assets to be able to find groups to, you know, to play a raid and perhaps maybe it will drop for you, for, you know, this Eagle Bearer. And I understand the difficulty um, of, you know, bringing an eight man team together. I got kicked out of many raid groups. I got insulted. I got cussed out. I got all kinds of crap thrown my way to get this weapon. Now, was it worth it? No, it's a digital gun. It's useless in all aspect of everything. But one of the reasons I went after this weapon was because people were talking smack in my comment section saying, oh, you don't even have the Eagle Bearer, yada, yada, yada. So this Eagle Bearer is a smack on their face. And that's why I actually pursued the weapon to get it. I was never necessarily interested in it. I had one of the best B416s that the game could ever drop for anybody. I think I still have it here. You know, this is one of my favorite uh, P416s. Now, don't mind my build, um, you know, but this P416 already did a good job for me. I ran, you know, a bunch of raids. I hadn't even rolled it. Um, I, I still have not rolled. I just left it this way because I just felt, man, maybe when I get a better weapon, or if I ever get a weapon, I got a carbine seven. That's also pretty decent. So I already had a, uh, you know, a good arsenal of assault rifles. And like I said, don't mind my build. My build is, was a build I was working on before this whole update turned everything upside down, the TU six. And I didn't build this character. I built my other skill character. And so this is how I got most of my, you know, exotics. Now, some other exotics that I got were more like the Merciless. It's not on this character. That was another buddy of mine that dropped it, but I let him know, hey, you know, we were playing these missions for me to farm the Merciless, and it dropped for him, and he said, hey, you can have it. There have been weapons like that that have been given to me. Some have dropped for me. My Pestilence, I went into DZ, I ran around, I, you know, farmed the, the you know, the, uh, what do they call them, checkpoints, landmark, sorry, but I finally got it from a control point boss. I, I sorry, a supply drop boss, and that's how I got mine as well. My Liberty and my Chatterbox, a buddy of mine in the onset of the game, a friend of mine was just like, yeah, let's go farm these parts. So I just went with them. We got all the parts. We built them, and we went that way. Now, 
why would it be even important for you to farm these exotic weapons at this point in the game? The game is about to change. Yes, you can still get them. Yes, but the more exotic weapons continue to get or exotic items keep getting added to the game, the more your backlog begins to grow. And to be very honest, one of the things about exotics is it's one of this kind of show off type things. There's a, there's a show off aspect of the division that many other, you know, RPG MMO style games don't have. In Division 1, we would literally send pictures upon pictures upon pictures upon pictures of our builds. Go ask everybody in this community if they have... If you've never sent a picture of your build to somebody in this community, then I don't know what kind of community member you are, but that's what many members of the community just do. We just show off the items that we've gotten, and it's just kind of a thing that comes with the territory. So you don't want to feel left behind, and at the same time, you don't want to let that backlog grow too much that you feel like you can never get you know, ahead. Now, I understand that many people may not have the time or may not understand, you know, may not be able to get people to play it with because many clan members have left. I, I guarantee if I look at my clan, I'm probably, I'm probably people who have not even touched this game for a while. This is where I'm offering, you know, our Discord server. We created a Discord server. They slapped my name on it. And a buddy of mine, Ubitnik, I don't even know if he's played for a while, went ahead and did all the admin stuff and the bots. And you can join that Discord server. Click the link in the description below and go ahead and seek, you know, for people to run and play with you. If you're on PC or like many of you who have just recently, you know, gotten a PC, gotten the Division 2 on PC, one of your better assets will be the, you know, the global chat. Now, this can have a whole bunch of spam and, you know, people writing in all kinds of different languages. But I guarantee you, I came to the Division 1 around this same kind of period. And in order for me to level up a char a, a, you know, another character, you know, I had to ask for help in some cases to kind of speed up the process. I already had three characters on PS4. And to be honest, I didn't want to sit down here and do everything from level one to 30 by myself. If you want to do that, by all means. But I did not want to do that process at that time. I wanted to get one character going because I wanted to do YouTube. So I started asking and some people said, ah, get out, just play the game. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then people are like, hey, hop in my group. We'll help you power level up. And that's the process. And so you have to use this. You also have to use the same system in order for you to request for raid groups because there are people who just come in here and they do pick up raid groups and it might be challenging to gather a group together. You just have to set out the time for it. And that's, I think, part of the process. It pains me so much that many of us have to go through this process for 15, 20 minutes, 45 minutes to gather a group, even in discord. Sometimes, you know, you got to find people because some people would have already like if you as I'm recording this video, this person says, uh, five out of eight normal uh, experience raid, add me on you play. So they're looking for three more people. If I wanted to play a raid right now, I would hop right in, but I have no need to play the raid except maybe to see if I'll get a second Eagle Bearer. Um, and to be very honest, I don't have the time right now to do so. But you see what I mean. There are people still playing the Division 2. I know there's talk about the game being dead and all that stuff, but having played the Division for a long time, I definitely understand how our community works and how this game provides so much more value and how new players continue to join and continues to keep the game going. So if you put this game aside and you've ever thought to, you know, to want to get the exotic weapons and the exotic gear in this game, I say now is the time. Go out there and seek help from the community. There are veterans running all over the place who have nothing else to do who will be happy to help you hunt for these things. And it's kind of challenging to find them, but you just do it. You, you know, come out of your shell. I know many of us are very introverted, but you know, you come out of your shell, talk to some people, they'll be happy to hook you up. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, if there's anything that I missed out, please, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are veterans, let me hear it in the comment section and let's have this discussion going so that people who want to get these things, especially the new players, and for those who just kind of put the game aside and are coming back to dust it up, getting ready for episode three, they can use this as a resource to be able to gather their exotics before we go into the new content that's coming. And perhaps they can get those drops, you know, day one, day two, day three, or however long it takes them. So that's pretty much it for me today. Thank you very much for your time and audience, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.